Okay, I'm going to do a short video here on how to winterize our Passport 217. It's a hybrid travel trailer, and since it's new to us, just wanted to go through and do a short winterizing video. Winterizing is a lot about water and keeping things from freezing, which causes breakages in your valves and water lines. So here we have two sources of water. You have your freshwater connection on the left, which feeds an underground underbelly tank that goes to your water pump. And then you have your city water connection, which is where you, you hook up at the campground, which typically um, bypasses your water pump. So when we start winterizing, we want to make sure we understand when we talk about fresh water or city water, I'm talking about which tank you're drawing from. Okay. Underneath your camper on the step side, right here's the steps, you'll see these two low point drains. These are your hot and your cold low points. So what I do is I take the caps off the end of there, those black caps, and I open the sink valves in the bathroom and in the kitchen to let the water drain back down onto the ground here. After that happens, I come up to the hot water heater on this side and I use a 15 16 wrench. Okay, so we have a, a 15 16 wrench. Sometimes it's helpful to have the closed end so you can get onto the plug, this plastic plug right here, that threads into your drain for your tank. All right, so you're gonna pull that out slowly, and as you do, it'll start to drip out. And then, right here, you can pull this up, and that lets air into the top of the tank so that the water flows out easily. Now remember, you've got six gallons there, so wherever you're working, it's gonna get quite wet. Now that the water's drained out of your camper, just by gravity, make sure you put those caps back on the low point drains. Then what I have is just a regular RV antifreeze. This here is you know, to run through your lines. Now I've already dumped it in, but I've dumped one gallon into the fresh water connection because I want our water pump to pick that up so I get RV antifreeze in the water pump. That way, throughout the winter, we don't have any issues with the pump. RV antifreeze is non-toxic but most importantly, what it does is it does not expand like water does when it forms a solid. So don't worry if you come out and your toilet has a gel-like substance in it of antifreeze. It doesn't expand like, ice, like water does when it forms ice. So go ahead, we're gonna add one gallon of fresh water, or one gallon of RV antifreeze to the fresh water tank. Now inside, you want to go through and you want to turn on your water pump. When you do, you should start to hear it wanting to work. Okay, so we're going to turn that on. There you go. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is working. I'm going to turn it back off. But you leave that on, and then what I prefer to do is come in here to the shower. The shower, we have an indoor shower and an outdoor shower. These are the points farthest away from the water pump. I want to get water into, I want to get the RV antifreeze into the shower hose and push out the water that's in there. Also, what I want to do is do the same with the toilet. So when your pump is on, you're going to step on your lever and let the water purge out of the toilet. It'll push up and then eventually you'll get nice pink RV antifreeze. I filled it up there, it's probably about a half inch, it's above the seal, and that's where I'm going to let that go. Now you can see here I got some cleaning up to do, I got the RV antifreeze in the shower basin, and that is going to, you know, just be a little bit of waste, not too much, but that came from the hose here on the shower. So you, you have your pump on, you turn on your cold water, and let this purge. Now you're always working with your cold water right now and that's what we're trying to just get through all these lines. Don't forget to do the same with the outdoor shower. Here we are at the outdoor shower. You can see I have the hose dangling down there. Remember the pump, the pump was on and I just used the cold water to push antifreeze down through the hose and winterize this portion of the system. We'll check 
that your low point drain caps are snug on and put the drain plug back into your water heater. And this is where I'm going to now begin to do the rest of the winterization on the hot water side. Now, you have some options. You can put more antifreeze into the fresh water tank. That'll just then, you'll keep the pump on and you'll go through your faucets and do the hot water side. What I like to do is, I actually, I'll, I'll blow my, I'm going to blow my airline uh, through the city water connection and push any moisture out and I'm going to push that out through the hot water lines and through the kitchen sink faucet on the cold side and the bathroom sink faucet also on the cold side. This is a aluminum piece here that I got off of Amazon. It connects for an air hose and it has this concave portion here so that as we thread it in we don't squish our screen. All right, so I can go ahead and I can put this in and we're ready to connect an air hose. Now this will save some RV antifreeze, but it's just another option. You can just go through and do all your winterization by more antifreeze in your freshwater tank and by pumping through your hot and cold sides on your faucets. Keep in mind, with the water heater, it needs a lot more antifreeze because you've got a tank there. And then you could drain that water heater back out and recapture that antifreeze. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to connect this to our um, air compressor. Here we have um, a rather large air compressor, but I've also done it before with my smaller pancake compressor. You can get either of these at like a Harbor Freight uh, fairly cheaply. The important part to note is you have a pressure gauge here, which is how much pressure is in the air compressor tank itself. And then you have the regulator, which you can control for different air tools. We do not want that to be more than 40 PSI. That's just like you know using your water pressure uh, attachment to your hose at the campground. Now, it's set at 40 PSI right now. As the valve, as I connect this, it's going to let that pressure run through and run continuous. So you can see my hose here to my flex hose. I prefer this so it doesn't put strain on my connection. As I connect this here, it's going to start to discharge and the drop gives me about 30 PSI and my air compressor is going to kick on. So then I try to quickly move through the camper and let the water purge out. So here we go. So here we are at the sink in the bathroom. I like to crack them. You can see the air coming out. Now this is the furthest away, and we got a steady stream of air right there. Okay. So I'm going to close the hot. I'm going to crack open the cold. Now here we may have some antifreeze come out because we were pushing. We were pushing that through with the water pump on the cold side. What's nice about this is this antifreeze can also go down into the trap right there and serve some uh, winterization for that trap. I wouldn't count on it just by itself. We'll come back and we'll add some of that in. Over here to the kitchen. I'm going to do the same thing with the kitchen, hot side, mostly air, cold side, I'm going to push some water up, and there's the pink antifreeze that was in the line, at least a little bit of it. So there we go with that. Now back here to the bathroom, we still have water in that hot line, so we want to get that out here. This can create a mess, but I don't, I don't want to run it through the hose, because I've already got antifreeze in there. We want to leave that in there. So just on the hot side, we're relieving pressure. But we'll let that run. While that's running, we're going to step outside and come out here. Now here, 
you already have some in there but we're gonna put the air pressure the air in to get any water out okay and you see it's pushing out a little bit of that antifreeze but that's okay we're getting we, we got all the water out because since this one's more exposed to the elements say being outside I'd rather have just dribbles of antifreeze in there and some air and less chance for that line to freeze. All right, so now let's quick go turn off our air compressor. So now you may hear some gurgling back here at the water heater. Remember, this is just a drain. So there might be a little bit of water in there, but the manual says not to worry about it because there's enough expansion. There's pressure now in the system, so we can relieve some of that pressure here. And there we go, that, that let the rest of the pressure out. Okay, here we are under the camper on the slide outside. You can see this hose right here is pink. That is your fill line, that's RV antifreeze on your fill line going to your freshwater tank. And there you can see this low point drain for the freshwater tank. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck our bottle up underneath of it should fit in there. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm gonna to have to take this off first. Get this off. Now we're gonna tuck, tuck that in there. And now we're recapturing the unused RV antifreeze. Uh, it looks like I should have planned it a little bit better, but not too bad. You can push or lift this line up here a little bit and that'll help push some more over. The idea be, basically being you don't wanna have too much, uh, you know, just laying in the tank there. A little bit's not too bad. Again, it, it's gonna rinse out when you do your spring uh, preparation. Okay, here we are back inside. You can see I got almost half a gallon back, which is pretty darn good. Um, you know, pretty nice placement on those pickup lines for that water pump. Now what we need to do is the second side. You've gotten all the supply protected. Now we need to do the second side, which is going to the tanks. And just like your kitchen sink at home, you have a, a trap here in the bottom, which uh, in this camper we have two sinks. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of this down each drain. And if you listen, you can actually hear it go into your gray tank. Oh. Okay. So there's a seal. That's probably the seal on my low point drain for the freshwater tank. Probably fell into the bottle as I had it tipped into place there. So we'll go back and we'll put that in. Come over to the bathroom. And in the bathroom, you have a sink drain. We're gonna put that in. Remember, the idea is that you're replacing the water in the trap with the RV antifreeze. So when you hear it go into the tank below your feet, you know you have enough in there. Don't forget the shower pan drain. Now that took quite a bit more than I thought by comparison. Now the rest of all this pink stuff, I'm just gonna wipe that all up so my shower pan's nice and clean and doesn't get stained. The toilet, you wanna leave like this. So that way you have a good seal as well as, you know, it's gonna protect the toilet. Don't forget you pumped that up using the pump. So everything in the toilet line is protected. So now we have our supply as well as our drains winterized on the water side of the project. Out here in the front we have our deep cycle battery. Now I have a winter shutoff uh, that I also use between trips and I've put on a battery tender cable. 
So that way I can keep the battery on tip top shape um, if I'm able to plug in somewhere. But I can also disconnect the battery between uses. This keeps my battery from getting drained. During the winter months though, it's probably best to pull the battery if you're in a real cold climate, uh, Pennsylvania, New York, etc. Uh, and take it into a garage. Don't put it on concrete though, um, put a piece of wood underneath. Propane tanks are another item. You might, you might want to go through and just shut off your valves. Obviously they should be shut off at this point anyway. Um, some people also prefer to pull the tanks. To me, I just disconnect them and leave the hoses dangle inside the housing. Everything there should be good. So again, go through, tidy up, make sure everything's connected underneath and sealed up and uh, you'll be ready for spring. Okay, well that about does the winterizing of the water systems in our camper. Now in general, otherwise, you know, you're going to want to go around and make sure your compartments are clean, vacuum them out, vacuum the carpets, double check things. Um, you want to make sure that you obviously don't have anything left in your freezer. But now when we got back yesterday, you can see that there's some uh, water puddled here. We're going to dry that out. And then in your manual, or at least in our manual, we had some plastic spacers that clip on to this tab here to help keep the doors open. And we did that in our pop-up as well before, before we got this. If you don't have them, one option is just to pull these drawers out and put one up here in the upper bin to keep the freezer open. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dry that out. It might take a few times. You can see here we've got some condensation still on our fins and in our drain pan. Um, some people take a compressed air and blow a little bit of air down that drain tube just to push any moisture out of the drain tube. I don't have any with me on hand at the moment. But um, you're going to go through, do a general good cleaning of everything. Periodically, you know, check on the camper throughout the winter and, uh, you know, make sure you don't have any, any critters uh, depending on where you live. Us being surrounded by farms, we have a few things that we put in the camper. Some people will use dryer sheets like the fresh scent dryer sheets in compartments. They say that works. Um, on Amazon, I found a product called Fresh Cab. Uh, I will put that in some of the bins. And most importantly though, in order for animals or critters to get in, they need a spot. So go underneath the camper, double check anywhere hoses come up, wires come up, that it's sealed properly. You can use an expanding foam like the door and window where it's just a real light expanding foam. You can also just use a caulk sealant. Um, but that is the majority of it. Take your time, clean things up, so in the spring you're ready to go.